What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, so today I want to go through the box tabby on Hack the Box. And this is a box that I actually haven't done before. Uh, it seems to be an easy Linux box, so hopefully we can root it here live and go through all the steps. Um, I figured it'd be cool to do a box that I haven't done before, just so like if you're new to Hack the Box or just looking to like see what my methodology was, you know, going through boxes on Hack the Box or OSCP, I typically do the same thing on, you know, whether, you know, no matter where the box is. So it could be a cool learning process for all of us. So I actually already have this box started and I've already done the initial Nmap scan just so that didn't take too much time. Um, so what I did is I did uh, Nmap, all ports, service version, uh, SC for the default scripts. And then I saved uh, the output format and all formats as TCP all ports. And then here is the IP of Tabby. Hey man, thanks for showing up. Glad to see you here. All right, so it looks like we have three ports open. We have 22, 80, and 80, 80. So it looks like we have SSH, uh, Apache, and Tomcat. So let's take a look at what these services actually look like if we browse to them. So go to port 80. It looks like, okay, we just have a hosting plan. Okay, that's interesting. And let's check 80, 80 on Tomcat. Let's see, I know there can be some cool Tomcat exploits. All right, so... Here is where Tomcat is actually hosted. That's interesting. And then we have the admin page. So I wonder if we can get in with like default credentials like admin, admin, or let's see, admin. I think secret is what Tomcat uses. Hmm. We'll dig into that in a second, I guess. Let's also get some Nikto scans and things like that up and running. So uh, let's do Nikto dash H and HTTP colon slash slash. And oh, that's the wrong thing. We get that IP again. Let's see. There we go. So let's see if Nikto can find any vulnerabilities. And at the same time, let's also get a uh, a Durbuster scan up and running. So start Durbuster. See if we can find any different hidden files and directories on the system. Let's see. All right. So there's that. We'll put in port eighty. Let's bump up these threads so that it goes <laughs> it goes a bit faster. And let's go get, I'm going to use the standard uh, Durbuster word list here. So that can usually find everything that we're looking for, especially on Hack the Box. Um, it's actually pretty effective when you're going through real applications as well. Now, something to note is that if this was an IAS server, the, um, the case, like it wouldn't be case sensitive. So like slash admin with a capital A and slash admin with a lowercase a would actually be like the same directory, right? So, but since it's Linux, it is going to be case sensitive. So let's just go with this regular directory list medium. Um, let's stick with just PHP extensions. That should be fine for now. And we'll just hit start. And let's see if that finds anything. Um, it looks like we already have some hits. Actually, a lot of hits. Um, all right, interesting. So I'm actually, no, that's a four or three. All right. So while that's running, let's just do some manual enumeration. Um, actually, we didn't try this Tomcat secret. Let's try that again. So I'll do Tomcat, secret, no, nothing. I know I've exploited some Tomcat applications in the past before, and I know that if we can get into here, we sh as a manager, we should be able to deploy a war file and get a reverse shell that way. So I don't know. We'll see if we can get in that way. Uh, but I'm not sure why this, this Apache server is here. So we'll do some manual enumeration and see if there's any, what is this? megahosting.htb slash news file equals statement. All right, so this is a pretty big red flag right here. Um, whenever I see like a PHP parameter being passed that says like file and then tells you the name of a file it's trying to call, that is usually um, an indicator that there is some sort of LFI or RFI. So let's take a look at that. Um, let's add megahosting.htb into our uh, Etsy hosts so that we can resolve it. Okay, so let's see. Oh, I guess we got to do it as root. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So now we should be able to add this in here. And I actually don't remember the IP address 194. All right. So 10.10.10.194. 10, 10 and then there is the name that we need to resolve. So now, what do we click on? News. Okay. So it doesn't doesn't seem to be getting anything. What if we change this to like test? 
Okay, so yeah, the fact that that is changing the content, that's a little fishy. So let's see if we can go, I can grab Etsy password. So we'll do a bunch of dot dot slash to try to get to like the slash directory of the actual file system. And we'll see if we can grab Etsy password. <laughs> All right, well, that was pretty quick. So it looks like we got an LFI uh, after a couple minutes. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. So cool little trick. If whenever you do an LFI, if you get like some jumbled garbage like this, if you just uh, inspect element or view source, I mean, uh, you'll get the nice format of Etsy password. So let's take note of that. I'm actually just going to put that into, I ah, know, we'll just leave this open. So it looks like we have some interesting users. We have Ash, uh, MySQL, Tomcat, LXD. Interesting. Okay. So I wonder, we're probably running as www data up here, I would imagine. Uh, but maybe, maybe Ash. So that's, that's interesting. Let's see if we can somehow get a shell. Um, so we know the user Ash exists. And we have LFI. Let's see, maybe we can grab Shadow. I doubt it, but we'll check. No, no, we're not that lucky, I guess. All right, so the next thing I would try for LFI is maybe we can grab like an SSH key from Ash. I mean, so so what we want to do now is try to see if we can grab sensitive, um, you know, files from the web server. So sometimes you can get lucky and grab an SSH key. And if you can do that, uh, we you know, since SSH is open, we might be able to SSH in as Ash. So let's do slash home slash Ash slash dot SSH slash We'll just take a guess at the name and just assume it's maybe the default of IDRSA. Nothing. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can do authorized keys. Maybe we can see if they have any SSH keys. Doesn't look like it. That's rough. Well, either they don't have SSH keys or we're running as www data and we don't have access to that user's home directory. So that's all right. Um, the next thing that I would say we should probably look for is uh, some other sensitive files like password files. So sometimes we can find something like in var www html, and maybe there's like a dot ht access file, and that would have like passwords in it for basic authentication. Nothing there. Let's try ht password. Hmm. Okay, nothing there. The next thing that I would consider is, let's see, let's go back to Nmap. I think we had, um, we had Tomcat running. Oh, let's see, well, actually, we, I'm not even gonna let this Nikto scan finish. I think we found what we needed from it. All right, so we have Tomcat on here. Let's take a look and see if we can grab some sensitive files from Tomcat. Um, if we go back to the Tomcat site, I think it actually gave us, yeah, it gave us the actual file path of where Tomcat is hosted. So I know that there are some sensitive files you can grab from Tomcat. I think you can even grab password files and like an XML file, or maybe it's an HTML. But if they link the docs here, let's see if we can see where the passwords would be dis displayed. Um, so here's the config file. Let's see if we can grab that with LFI. Maybe that'll have something in interesting in it. So here's the, yeah, here's where Tomcat is actually stored in the file system. So let's plug that into our LFI. And I think, let's see, yeah, let's grab this here. And we'll see if we can grab the config file. Nothing. Okay. Maybe we got the wrong path. Hmm. I'm gonna look up where Tomcat uh, passwords are stored and see if we can grab whatever that file is. Uh, we'll say, where are Tomcat passwords stored? Okay, so let's see where they are. Okay. This doesn't look like what we need. Um, oh, here it is, Tomcat users XML. Yeah, there we go. So Tomcat home. Okay, so let's try to plug that in and see if maybe we can grab some passwords from there. If we can get an admin Tomcat password. I feel pretty good about us being able to get in and get a shell. Okay, nothing from that. I feel like we've got the 
the path wrong. Let's see. Hmm. Maybe we don't need the web apps. Let's try that. Nope. Interesting. I feel like we definitely, I mean, if we're running as WWW data, right? You would assume that Apache and Tomcat are both running that way. So that's what's leading me to think that we should be able to grab some sensitive files from Tomcat. Let's see. Um, let's look up Tomcat 9 uh, password file. See if we can find uh, the full path in here. I feel like we're, we're missing something. So let's see. Yeah, slash comp slash Tomcat users. Okay. That's where we are. Hmm. I wonder if maybe this root is actually uh, needed. Let's take a look and see if that's it. Okay, so we'll put that in there. Nope, nothing. That's super strange. Well, hmm. I feel like we should we should definitely be able to grab that, I would assume. Unless Tomcat is running as a different user, but that that wouldn't make too much sense to me. Let's see. Well, let's see. Tomcat password file. Let's see if we can find an LFI payload for it. I mean, Tomcast, let's see. It will be in the user directory. User directory. Let's see. Oh, you, oh. I see. User share Tomcat. Ah, smart. Good call, man. Thank you. So we'll try user share Tomcat 9 and then conf. Hmm. User share Tomcat 9 conf slash Tomcat users. Okay. That doesn't seem to be working either. Let's take a look. Oh, we got two confs in there. Interesting. So we have user share. Okay. Well, let's see. We know. Oh, wait. Users are defined in Etsy. To, oh, well, I mean, it would help if we actually read the full page. Uh, I would say reading is fundamental to hacking, and I think we might have just failed that big time. Nope, nothing there. So let's see. They have this uh, zipped file here. Let's see if we can grab that. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, that's good. So we can grab that. So we now know we have LFI and we know that we can access stuff from Tomcat. So I feel pretty confident that this is the correct path. Um, I'm just not sure exactly how we can grab these password files. I mean, it looks like it says users are defined here, but I don't know why we can't grab that. That's very strange. I wonder if we're doing something weird. I think this is the exact same thing, right? Let's see. Yep, same thing. User share, Tomcat9, Etsy. Okay. I'll try that. Thanks for the suggestion, man. Let me copy and paste that from the chat. Pentest Sky, you are the man. Nice work. That's awesome, dude. Sweet. So it looks like we just had a little bit of butchering in the path. Um, so it looks like user share Tomcat 9 is where the base is, right? And then, um, well, I don't know. That's a little weird. Sweet, though. That's awesome. So that's, it looks like we actually just got the Tomcat password. So props to you, man. That's awesome. Good work. Sweet, sweet. So now we should be able to log in um, with Tomcat, like the Tomcat user. So let's go back to the default Tomcat page. And we'll go to the manager web app and ho hopefully we should be able to log in. Oh, let me copy that password first. Okay. Secure password, one, two, three. Awesome. And we'll log in with the user Tomcat. And we'll paste that password in. Hmm, did not work. We are missing an S in the beginning. So Tomcat. Okay. Maybe it's a capital S. I must be not pasting this correctly. Let's see. Oh, it's a dollar sign. 
Well, that would make sense. All right. Let's see. All right, Tomcat. I'll paste that in. Access denied. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, we have manager script access, not manager GUI. So we, we are able to log in as the admin, but we don't have GUI access. That is interesting. Okay, now I think Tomcat has some sort of API which we can use uh, to upload files. So I, my, my thoughts right now are we should try to upload a war file because I know Tomcat, you can upload war files. And uh, from there, you can like make a reverse shell war file with MSF Venom and deploy that. So I wonder if there's a way we can do it from the command line, like with the API. So let's do some Googling and figure that out. Um, so Tomcat, um, let's see, deploy, deploy war file from API. Let's see if that works. Uh, actually, we'll make sure this is Tomcat 9 as versions matter. So let's see how to deploy a war file in Tomcat. Let's hopefully this is not through the GUI. Um, let's see. Yeah, see, we, we would need this manager GUI to actually be able to, to look at it. But I mean, we do have access to the application as the admin. So I think that should be enough. But I don't think this article is what we need. Let's see after deploying. Okay. Oh, that's not what we need. Okay, let's check. There's got to be some way to do it from the API. Might have to read a little bit of docs. That's probably uh, one of my least favorite things about, um, you know, hacking or pen testing is all the doc reading. You know what I mean? You're going to come across so many different applications. And um, part, of the, part of the job is learning how to learn about new services. You know, I mean, I come across new applications and new technologies every single day. And uh, it's a challenge to learn them all, but it, it keeps you on your toes, you know? So let's see. There's got to be, I want like a, a quick guide to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like to take the easy way for it, but might end up having to read the docs. Okay, yeah, how to deploy a, a war file. Okay. Hmm. Is there like an API? No. Tomcat, uh, manager. What was that role that we had? Manager script. Deploy war file. Let's see if we can do it that way. Okay. HTTP put request. I like it. Actually, looks like an article back here. Deploy war file using curl. That's what we want. Okay. Upload file. And then. Okay, sweet. So let's try this. Um, this is for, it looks like Tomcat 8, but let's try, let's just try to generate a war file and see if it works. Uh, so we'll look up the MSF Venom command for a war file, and we'll see if that will work. Okay, look for war. Okay, here's this. Now let's make sure that we have our IP squared away. Okay, now let's run this. We'll generate our payload and say a prayer and hopefully we can get it on there. So let's see, let's put the local port as 443. I like to stick with safe ports. I mean, a lot of guides will show you using like port 444 or, or things like that. But, you know, a lot of times you're not going to find those ports actually being open. So you don't want to do that um, because firewalls are a thing and you don't want to get burned by the firewalls. I, that's happened to me so many times where like, you get RCE and you try to upload something, but you can't get a call back. And, you know, <laughs> I would definitely recommend sticking with like safe ports, like 80, 443, 53, things that aren't typically blocked. All right. So now we have our shell.war file. So let's, uh, let's just kill this dirt buster. I don't think we need it at this point. Let's start up MSF console. Actually, we're going to have to sudo that. That's one of the things that uh, started to bug me about when Kali got updated a few months ago and uh, the default users are not root. I know I could set a root password and do all that, but you know it does make sense to not run everything as root, but it definitely is uh, a little bit annoying. So let's see. Here's our payload type. Let's make sure we get that squared away. Um, so let's see. Let's use exploit. 
slash multi handler. All right, sweet. We'll set the payload type equal to this. We'll set the local host to tunnel zero and the set the local port equal to 443. And now we should be able to run this. Awesome. No conflicts. That is good. Okay. Now we have this. Um, I'm actually going to, yeah, no, actually, well, that's fine. So we want to try to upload this shell.war file. So let's go back to this little GitHub gist that we found. And let's grab this. Okay, let's paste. And okay, HTTP Tomcat Tomcat. Okay, so here's where we need the password. So let's go back and grab that. Now this could cause some issues because of the special character. So you got to make sure to enclose this in single quotes because, uh, you know, in bash, the dollar sign and the exclamation point are special characters. So this would cause some issues. So let's just make sure we put that in single quotes. Uh, at localhost, no, that's going to be at, let's see, one, no, 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 at 101010, 10, 10, what, 194? Jeez, I can't remember all of these. 194. Yeah, perfect. All right. Uh, manager deploy path application. Okay. Let's see if it works. Event not found. Let's see. What did I do wrong? Hmm. Yep. See, that's the that's what I'm talking about. Is the the uh, exclamation point is causing an issue there. So I think let's just try without the single. Oh, we don't have the double quote at the end. Nope, that's not working. Okay. Now I think we should put it. I think uh, let's see. Let's change these double quotes to single quote. And ah, there we go. And let's see if this works. Cannot open open application. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, well, I'm an idiot. Well, I kept the <laughs> the default the default name. Uh, copy and paste error. There we go. So let's uh let's change this to shell dot war. Just saying. Method not allowed. Okay. So it doesn't like that. So, okay. Interesting. I wonder if we do like a X put, change the method to put. Nope, doesn't like that either. Okay. Let's go back to this guy and see if we're missing something. Hmm. Okay. Manager deploy. Yeah, let's make sure, see if the docs on our um, Tomcat instance said something different. So let's check these docs again and just double check uh, how to deploy war file by URL. Okay. Aha, here we go. This looks like what we need. And path to on the Tomcat server. Okay. Sorry, I had to read that real quick. Uh, okay, so it looks like we might be missing something here. Let's try doing this path instead. So let's see. We'll get rid of this put method. And instead of manager deploy, let's do, I think it was manager text deploy. Aha, all right. That's what it took. So, <laughs> you know, lesson learned. Make sure you read the actual application docs instead of just Googling. Because, I, like I said, I think that one that we were reading was for Tomcat version 8. We're running 9, so it seems to be a little different. Uh, but now, hopefully, we can browse to this URL, uh, you know, to this application, and get our reverse shell. So, fingers crossed. Let's see if we can do it. Um, I think we'll just go to slash. Oh, I don't know what the path's going to be. Just try this. Okay. Command shell session one open. That's good. Looks like we got our call back. Now, is it actually going to give us a shell? Aha, we have a shell. That's awesome. All right. Perfect. So we just owned the Tomcat application. I think that was really cool, actually. Who, let's see, who are, who are we? Tomcat. Interesting. Okay. 
Now, I really like that uh, initial foothold right there. I think that is something that you could see on the, you know, OSCP kind of thing. That's those are the kind of tricks that they would pull on you. You know, it's like you might have two different services and you have to kind of try to figure out a way to relate one to the other, like how we just got an LFI in one application, but had to use that to exploit a different application. So it's that kind of like thinking out of the box that leads to these exploits. So that was that was really cool. I really enjoyed that foothold so far. So let's see if we can get a privest going. Um, first of all, I don't like having this non-interactive shell. So let's see if we can get an interactive shell with Python. Do we have Python in the box? No. Do we have Python 3 in the box? Yes. Okay, so a cool little thing that you can do is do uh, Python 3-C import pty, pty.spawn, if you can type it, and then do a slash bin slash, oh, make sure we don't mess up our quotes here. You can't mix those. Spawn slash bin slash bash. Ah, I'm butchering this. All right. Now this command right here is going to use Python to spawn an interactive PTY session. So once we do this, we should have the normal, um, you know, bash environment that we're used to seeing. Yes, perfect. So you can see now that once we run that, we actually see we are Tomcat at Tabby. And it looks like we have, you know, all these kind of Tomcat files in here, which makes sense. So I wonder, so that's so interesting. So now we are Tomcat, but if you recall, there's also an Ash user on here. Um, so that makes me think that we can't just go straight from Tomcat to root. It makes me think that there's some sort of intermediary step. You know, a lot of times people get their initial foothold and they kind of get tunnel vision and they want to go straight to root. But I'm, I'm not sure that's going to be the case. It might be, uh, but I, I don't think so. Let's do a sudo dash L. Okay, we don't have sudo permission. So there goes that easy privesque. Okay, so we have that. Now, sometimes let's do a little bit of enumeration. Let's go back to... Uh, we'll just do a CD. If you just type in CD without anything, it brings you to your home directory in case you didn't know. Um, so wait, so Tomcat's an actual user here. That's interesting. It has a home directory and the home directory is not the Tomcat directory. That's strange. So let's do a quick uh, Linnynum on here and see if we can find anything interesting. So actually, let's see what groups we're into. Just Tomcat, all right? So we're in, what is this? Okay, I don't know what this directory is. Let's see what's in here. Uh, okay. Okay, that seems to be like some just temporary Tomcat data. That, I don't know if that'll be too useful. Um, let's try to get a, um, let's get Linium on here, run that and see if we can get any privilege escalation going. So I'm actually going to split this here so we can have both of our screens up. Um, Get some blank lines there. And actually, I need to download a fresh copy of Linium. So let's go ahead and grab that. Let's see. All right. We'll go for Linium.sh and view raw. And we'll just W get this right here. Okay. Now we have this. We have Linium.sh. Uh, let's see. Let's do a quick... Python web server, so uh, sudo python m simple HTTP, and we'll run that on port 80. Awesome. So now we should just be able to wget linium and um, put that onto our target machine. So wget HTTP colon slash slash RIP slash uh, linium dot sh. File not found. Uh, case sensitive. So <laughs> my bad. So wget http colon slash slash rip slash lin enum dot sh. There we go. So now we have linium on here. Um, let's see. Now let's just go back into this. Uh, I want to run linium. And then let's tee it to 
um, le.txt. So this should, um, if you pipe it to T, it should output the, uh, you know, all the output to our screen and also send it into a file. So that way we can see it as it runs and then go back and read it from a file later. And hopefully we can find some interesting stuff here. Um, but I'm not sure. Let's take a look. So let's go back up to the top. Let's see. All right, here we are. So Ubuntu 2004, new version of Ubuntu. Actually, I think there was a, uh, a privilege escalation that came out for Ubuntu that had something to do with the um, the GUI system. But I, I hadn't I haven't looked into it too much. And since that just came out, I would imagine that's not the intended method here. So, well, I'm not going to go down that route. Um, let's see. So, yeah, we already know about all these different users. Um, as of now, I'm thinking we should target Ash. Um, and, you know, if we see a way to go directly to root, we'll go for it. But I'm thinking it's going to be a, a block, so we need to get to a user first. So, yep, all the environmental variables. Okay. And we have Tmux and screen on here. That's cool. I wonder if those are set UID. Um, cron jobs, E2 scrub all. That's kind of weird. Um, so we have some cron jobs that run as root. That could be worth looking into. Um, Apache 2, okay. Log rotate. None of this stuff looks too weird. We'll, we'll go back and look at those cron jobs after. I want to see if there's anything like glaring that stands out. And then there's also some other common stuff we should try before we even dig into this, honestly. Um, no, no weird T... Uh, actually, let's see. We do have... Now, the only thing that's running on a, on a loopback address is DNS. Um, I don't really see that coming into play too much. It could. It very well could, but I'm not sure. Uh, all these processes that are running... Kind of skip through those a little bit. It's definitely good to look through them all, but there's a ton here. Um, let's see. Binary permissions. Okay. Let's see if there's any set UID files. Let's skip down to that section and see. I'm assuming there's nothing too crazy on this box since it's easy, but uh, I've definitely been uh, fooled in the past. Sometimes the easy boxes you get stuck on because you overthink things or maybe it's just a, a technology you've never seen before. It happens all the time, really. See, pseudo version, that all checks out. MySQL, maybe we could pull something from MySQL. Not sure, that'd be interesting. Although we might have to be the MySQL user, which we're not. If we were, I would think that's the way. So we have netcat on here, wget and curl, that's good. No GCC, so again, I'm not assuming there's any kernel exploits. Uh, typically, if there was a kernel exploit, you would need some sort of C compiler on the box. Not always, but uh, you know they typically will tell you. Uh, man, it looks like we have a lot of set UID files. So let's look through these. Mount, ping, su. None of these look out of place. These all look like they are standard. Um, if you're wondering how I know that, I mean, it really just comes down to experience. The more you see these and uh, work off of sites like GTFO bins, uh, you can usually spot which ones don't belong pretty quickly. So I think those are all in check it doesn't nothing stands out to me that isn't standard uh set guid files i don't think none of these are really going to be useful for us so we'll skip through that postix capabilities nothing what actually wait um no those look fine nothing weird okay if you're wondering like what i'm looking for through all this i actually did a full video talking about Linenum and, uh, you know, how you can run it and how you should analyze the reports from it. And uh, so, if you know, if you want to learn more about that, go check that video. It's about 20 minutes long, but I go through every single section, explain how it could be used for Provask and all that. So it can be really useful, especially if you're just starting out. All right. So I don't know. I didn't see anything crazy from this uh, Linenum scan. Um, let's think of common misconfigurations. So we know we have an Ash user. What's and we're as www data. Let's see if we can let's check for like a lazy admin, um, you know, and password reuse. So we'll just do sue to uh ash. I think that should no, okay, it's not giving us a password automatically. Let's copy and paste that. Sometimes you'll see like password reuse, um, 
which is something I never used to check for. And it's burned me so many times that um, I always check for it now because that's like one of the most annoying things to me is when I forget to check. Let's see. Nothing. Hmm. Are we doing the correct thing? I don't. Let's see. Let's make sure. And then I'll try it again with the single quotes because I'm not sure if any of this is going to be weird or it might even be easier to check. Is this a space here? That might be causing it. I don't know. I don't necessarily trust this session be for with those uh, weird characters. I'm going to try it via SSH since we have access to Ash. Or maybe we can even SSH in as Tomcat. That would be pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure. Well, let's try that. See if we can SSH in as Tomcat and get a even more stable shell. So 10, 10, 10, 194. Yeah, we'll accept that key. Okay, you can't do Tomcat. Can we do Ash? Permission denied public key. I wonder why it's saying that. That's that's weird. So do we, is it key only authentication? See, I think this is pasting a space in front of it. Maybe not. Interesting. Hmm. All right, so that doesn't work. Now, I'm going to look back through, let's see. Let's go to the Tomcat files. So what was that user? I don't remember where it was at this point. Um, let's cd to slash user slash share slash uh, Tomcat. And let's see. Um, let's see if there's any interesting files in here. Sometimes you can find passwords and things that are left around. Even though we already did get a password from here, that would be a little strange to find another one, but who knows? All right. Um, so let's just do a grep dash LR for uh, password. Ciphers digest. Okay. So let's cat. Uh, well, actually, we'll do a less on ciphers. Okay. This is not going to work. <laughs> um, let's just do a cat on ciphers. Okay. Anything interesting here? All right. Sorry. Um, doesn't look like anything crazy. Okay. Nothing weird in ciphers. And I forget what the other one was. Do grep-lr for password again. Let's see if we can find any passwords. Uh, so digest. So let's cat digest. Okay. Um, nothing crazy in there. Now let's go check the cron stuff again. So cd uh, slash etsy slash cron d. I didn't do Etsy. Uh, CD slash Etsy slash cron dot D. And let's do an LS dash LA. What is this EC2 scrub all? Just cat that file. Um, hmm. Root test. Interesting. Hmm. That is, that's a little strange. I'm not sure what that's for. Uh, let's see what this PHP is. Okay, um, so again, runs as root, runs varlib php session clean. Okay, let's do an ls-la on this. We can't write to that or anything. Um, see if we can write to this. So if we can write to any of these files, then it would potentially lead to, you know, us being able to write to them put whatever we want in it. And then if root runs it, of course, that's going to lead to some sort of privilege escalation as well, because we can, you know, write code that's executed by root. Nothing in there either. Interesting. So that popularity contest is usually there. So actually, I'm going to look back at this EC2 scrub all. Let's see. Um, let's see what this file is. We can do an LSS LA of that. Nope, we can't write to that either. Um, we can't even read it. 
Let's check this one. Not cat. We'll do ls dash la on this. And we can't read that. All right. Cron jobs are going nowhere. <laughs> it's the name of the game sometimes, you know? So let's do a cat slash Etsy password again and see what other users we have on here. So um, we have Ash, MySQL, Tomcat, LXD. Those are the strange ones that I'm seeing. So let's go back to our home directory. Uh, yeah, nothing weird here. I'm wondering how we can get in. Oh, wait. Clive, what's this? That's weird. I wonder why it says Clive there. That's so that's I think that's the description field. Um that's really strange. I wonder if we can I wonder if the, is that the user's password? That wouldn't seem right, but no, we can't even uh we can't do that. We need a public key. Let's see. Okay, so let's see if we can sue to Ash. And we'll type in Clive. Interesting. Hmm. Very, very strange. I wonder, am I, I wonder if I'm screwing up the sue command. Let's see. Because nothing's really standing out too much for privilege escalation. Um, so I'm not... I'm not too sure. Sue dash L. Oh, am I? Yeah, am I just doing that wrong? Let me grab the password again. Nothing. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that <laughs> I think we should probably give up on that route. Let's see. I don't know. I feel super weird about, um, I'm going to try to get out of the interactive session. I know that seems counterintuitive, but let's see. Yeah, so Tomcat, I don't know. Uh, let's get our interactive session back again. So we'll do Python-C, import PTY, and then... Um, colon pty dot spawn and then slash bin slash bash all right now we'll get our interactive session back again maybe oh <laughs> python 3 my bad so do python 3 i'm actually going to just open up a i'll well, just paste it in here i guess i don't want to type this in again to so do python 3 now, a lot of times I used to get caught up just using Python and not checking Python 3 when doing this. And uh, again, that's something I've been burned on before and it definitely was not fun to work through. So let's see what other kind of stuff is in Tomcat. We can grab some interesting stuff from here. So let's CD into web apps. And let's see, we have these different applications. We have root, which we cannot get. Oh, we can get into, okay. Um, let's CD into here. Just do some enumeration on the box and see what we can get into. Uh, let's cat this file. Nothing crazy in here. Okay. Go back and see. Um, okay. Now, let's go back again. Um, I wonder, what is this? We have work and logs. Both of those could be interesting. And comp. So let's go into comp first. And nothing too weird here. Um, actually, let's go into the HTML directory again. Let's see if like it comes back around and maybe there's some sensitive files in here. You know, we went from the Apache server to Tomcat. Maybe we'll go back to Apache and see if there's anything interesting. Uh, so let's cat this readme.txt. See what that says. Uh, that doesn't seem like anything important. Files. Okay, that's a little weird. And that's owned by Ash. Okay, that's a good, that is a good sign. Okay, we have a backup file. We have an archive, revoke certs, and state. Okay, so, okay, I like this. This is owned by Ash, so we could potentially get some cool stuff here. 
Um, but we don't have access to any of these. So, oh no, we can we can read this. Okay, so let's see if we can unzip this file. Actually, let's just copy it to slash temp. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just see if we can download it. So it is what slash files. So let's just go back to the Apache server and let's see, we'll do here and let's do slash files and then slash the name of this zip file, not found, uh, files, plural. So let's see, let's plug that in. Awesome. Okay. So we can download this zip file. That is good. That's a good sign. All right. Now let's copy from our downloads. We'll get that zip folder. Let's put it in our tabby directory. I like to keep everything nice and neat. Uh, once you get too many boxes on here, it can be a real pain to, you know, try to figure out where all these scripts and exploits and stuff came from. Um, we need a password. Okay. Uh, we'll try password reuse. And then if not, we can try cracking the zip file password. Um, I th there's a few different tools we could use for that. We can use zip to John or F zip. I think it's called password recorrect, uh, incorrect. Okay. Nothing. Hmm. Let's try F crack zip. We don't have that. Um, sudo. Oh, let's try to install it. See if we can. I don't know if it's even still a tool anymore. It's pretty old. Okay. Awesome. Okay. It's still there. Awesome. I just didn't have it installed. Okay, so let's do f crack zip on this, uh, what's it called? Yeah, this random number backup file. Um, oh, I, I didn't expect that syntax to completely work. Uh, <laughs> so let's just do f crack zip again. I want to see how we can pass a word list to it. And uh, let's see, we'll try to use rock you. I know that's a pretty standard one to use. Uh, so we'll do dash d for dictionary. And, uh, yeah, I think that should be fine. Well, let's just try it again and see what it wants. So we'll just do dash D before here and see if it prompts us. Yeah, no such file or directory. Okay, so we'll do slash user share uh, word list and rocku.txt. No, it doesn't like that. Um, let me look up the syntax. I'm definitely screwing something up here. Let's see. F crack zip. Um, you know, rock you. Look something like that up. See, we should get some syntax. I know I've used this tool quite a few times in things like CTFs. Um, it comes in handy a lot. So let's see. I can just never remember the the syntax of it. So dash V U D okay. So we need to do it looks like I ah, will just copy this. This will be fine. Okay, we'll do this one here. Get rid of all this junk in the front and paste in what we just found. Okay, so it looks like that's going to go through and crack. Oh, password found. Okay, admin at IT. That's good. So let's see if that's actually, let's make sure that's the password. So do a one six. Okay. Awesome. So that is the password for that. So now we should be able to, did it not unzip it? Oh, wait, we have this var file now. Okay. All right. So it looks like, yeah, this is a backup of the the web directories, which is no surprise. I mean, that's what I figured it would be. Um, so let's do another grep-lr for, like, password. Nothing. Let's just try pass. Um, admin. Basically, we're just checking all of the files and directories for you know, some sort of search term, see if we can find like a sensitive file in here. Um, so let's just go back into that files directory and see if there's anything cool in there. Nothing. Man. Brutal, huh? So let's cd into assets. Nothing. Okay. Um, let's cat this news.php. If that's what we use to exploit. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's why I was vulnerable to LFI and absolutely no uh, input sanitation done. So no surprise there, we're able to exploit that. Now, let's see, so we have a new password now, which was what admin at IT. Let's try the uh, 
lazy admin approach again and see if we can sue to Ash um, with that password. Whoa, whoa, all right, that worked. Perfect. All right, the lazy admin approach. That's awesome. So that's that's an important thing to check, you know? A lot of times this password reuse thing, I mean, it, it happens, you know? A lot of times a developer might spin up a test account, put some sort of weak password on it or reuse their password. Or I know um, I've done a lot of infrastructure automation. So with all my default images, they have to have, you know, like the same password or I guess you don't have to, but that's the easiest way to do it. And then you go back and change them, change them later. But, you know, sometimes if you're working with maybe, you know, a thousand machines, one night, one might not get changed and that's all it takes. So now we have user. That is awesome. So it looks like, yep, we have the user.txt. Of course, I'm not going to open that up because, um, you know, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. But since we, you know, we can, you can see we do have permission to open this and now we are user. All right, so not too bad, not too bad. We're about 50 minutes in, we have user. You know, I'll take it, I'll take it. So now we wanna go and try to priv ask to root, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is a sudo dash L because if you get sudo access, that can be the easiest thing to do. I'll paste in that password. Okay, we don't have sudo access. That's a shame. Um, so let's go back into, actually, you know what? The first thing I wanna do is see if we can get an SSH key in here because I don't want any more of this this shell here. You know what I mean? I don't want this uh, weird shell we've got going on. So let's make a directory called SSH. Um, let's CD into there. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is um, let's generate a new key pair. Actually, I might I probably have a key pair in here that I use just for boxes. So let me see. Let's cat. Um, dot ssh and then id let's see nope we don't have one okay so we'll do ssh key gen what's the dash yeah ssh key gen i don't care about the size of the key or anything like that this is not meant to really be secure or anything we don't need a password or anything on it that's that's not what you should do in practice though of course right um so i'll paste this in let's cat out the public key What do you mean? <laughs> um, let's cd into dot ssh slash dot ssh. And yeah, we have idrsa.pub. Why can't we open this? What do you mean? This is my file. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. So now we have our public key. So let's just go put that in place over here. So we'll do an echo, echo this key into uh, authorized keys. And let's see, I think we need to make this, I think we have to make this 600 permission. Let me just double check off of what we had before. Um, let's see. So let's do an ls slash la our authorized. Oh, we don't have one. I think six, maybe 644 will work. SSH is really finicky about the permissions on the files that it controls. So, um, you know, you got to make sure you're careful with that. Okay. So now what we can try to do is SSH and as ash at what? 10, 10, 10, 194. All right. Awesome. So that's, that's perfect. I love to do this on hack the box machines or whatever it is, because, you know, SSH is going to be a super stable shell. And plus we have a way to get back in after, um, uh, Looking at the chat now. Hey, man, what's going on? Thanks for showing up. Appreciate you being here. Uh, we just got users, so we're we're working through it, making progress. Um, so hopefully, we'll find a way to get to root pretty soon, and we'll see what happens. All right, all right. So we have a stable shell in as Tabby. Let's go back into temp, and we... Oh, man, our, our Linium is gone. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> All right, so are we still running the web server? I I don't know. Um, nope, no web server running. So just get rid of all this mess. Um, oh, nope, that's not what we want. Ah, I'm 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 screwing this all up. Let's see. Now we want Python dash m simple 
HTTP server on port 80. All right, not working, sudo. Already in use. Okay, it looks like we, we must be still running it. I don't know where that tab went then. Uh, that's kind of weird. Am I missing something here? I don't know. Um, that's fine. We'll just try to w get it again, and hopefully we're still running that same web server in that location. Uh, <laughs> that would be nice. So here's our tabby shell. So we'll do wget http colon slash slash here and then uh, lanynum.sh again. All right. I guess that web server is still running in the background. So that's good. Um, now we have lanynum. Do a proper. Oh, you're right. I'm zoomed in on pain, on pain one. Thanks, man. <laughs> Tmux. Still getting used to it, man. I make uh, so many mistakes in Tmux. Still, it happens, you know. It happens. So uh, I can't clear. That's fine. So now let's just run Linenum again. Uh, I don't think we have our files still, right? No. No, no, no. Um, let's go back to temp. And oh, no, we did have Linenum. I don't know what I'm doing. It's, it's, it's not going my way today. I'll tell you that. Uh, so let's do bash Linenum. Nope, doesn't like that. Um, this is not the right shell. There we go. Now we are where we need to be. All right. So now let's wget this again, because I definitely just screwed that up. So we're still in temp, but the files aren't there. Okay. So let's wget http colon slash slash rip again, and then slash linenum dot sh. There we go. Now we have what we need. Um, and then again, we're just going to run Linenum, so we'll do bash linenum.sh, and we'll t that to, I would say, le.txt. Uh, le so now we should be able to see that as it runs and get some cool information. Hopefully, we'll find a, a way to root doing this, so let's see. Uh, let me just go back up, and we'll start at the beginning and start reading through this see what we can find. I think I can't believe I made that Tmux ish that error. That's pretty funny, but you know I'm I'm still getting used to it. I think Tmux is super cool, but it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. I think I've been using it for about a month now, but uh, I love it so much. But it's just like all these little things you forget, you know, and it's like oh I have that window zoomed in, or oh, I forgot I had the session running, or things like that, you know. So definitely pretty cool though. Um, so let's see, we have nothing. Ah, uh, groups. This this LXD group looks a little weird off the bat. Um, I think that has to do with like a lin. I think we have that means we have permissions to access the Linux container daemon, which is a little weird. I've never worked too much with that, but I know using Docker. If you're in the Docker group, there's a privilege escalation method for that. So I I guess that's something we'll keep in mind. I'll come back to it if nothing else sticks out. But I know like. If we're in the Docker group, for example, uh, which is another container engine, we can volume mount the root file system, and then you know we can edit all the files on the file system as root. So we can do something like add a new user or a root SSH key or whatever. Um, so we'll come back to that. That's interesting. Um, no other users or anything that we need, right? Ash was the only one. We don't have sudo access. Um, no other real admin users. Let's see. We already know about like cron jobs and things like that. We already know about set UID files. So nothing. Let's see. Well, I don't know. Maybe something else will stand out this time around, but I'm not sure. Everything should be the same unless there's some weird things that we have permission to that we didn't before, which definitely can happen. That's why I would recommend running these, um, you know, local privilege escalation scripts every time that you find a new user with some more access, because you might see things that didn't appear before. Still no crazy listening internal connection. So like no internal services that are running. Um, sometimes you'll see something that's only running on localhost and you can interact with it. Maybe do like a um, an SSH port forward and expose it to the internet and exploit it that way. But it doesn't look like anything's going on there besides DNS. Like it could, I mean, it could be something. It could be an LPE for uh, the DNS version running. I don't know. I'd assume we're probably running bind. 
Um, nothing crazy, nothing standing out. Let's go through all these services. Um, let's see. Pseudo version, yep, nothing crazy. Uh, patch user, yep, we already know all that. MySQL stuff. Maybe we could get into the MySQL database. Uh, we can test that again, um, but I don't think so. Who knows? Uh, nope, nothing on any of these Etsy files over here. This is actually yeah, something you got to check. Um, I know sometimes you can overlook these things really easy, but this could be a super easy privilege escalation if you have like right permission onto one of these. I know I built a box where I did that and uh, a lot of people overlooked it. I just, you know, added right permission to like, you know, I don't know, it was either like Etsy shadow, Etsy password, something like that. And then, you know, you can just add yourself a new root user or whatever, but uh, it's not something you typically look for. It's really easy to miss. So set UID files again, nothing, nothing crazy. I mean, I don't see anything that I didn't see before. Same with uh, set group ID. Post six capabilities, yeah. I mean, these all look the same. We have some config files that we didn't have before. Uh, no, we did have them before. I just, we haven't looked at them yet. Um, but nothing that seems super sensitive. I don't see any crazy config files. Um, bash history, that could be worth checking out. Um, and yeah, so right here, we're a member of the, okay. Well, Lenny Num's telling us this. So member of the LXD group could possibly misuse this, right? So. I'm gonna let's trace down that uh, privilege escalation method and see if we can get anything out of that. I've I've never worked with LXD before or a privesque with it, so I have no idea what I'm even doing with that. But uh, we'll just see if we can do an LXD uh, privesque and see if we can find anything out there. All right, this is a great site for finding all sorts of um, you know different different techniques and things like that. Let's see. Yeah, hacking articles is great. It really is. I mean, I've learned so much from this site. So let's see. Uh, Linux containers, yeah, lightweight virtualization technology. Uh, so LXD, yeah, so LXD is Linux daemon. So that makes sense. Okay. So LXC, which was used by Docker before. Okay. So yeah, so it seems like this is going to lead to the same kind of privilege escalation method. So Looks like what they're doing is LXD ins installation. Okay, so they're setting it up and they're adding all these users. Okay, they're pointing out the users in the LXD group, which we are. Um, LXD init, they're saying we have to do that. And then we can launch a session. So let's see if we should do an LXD init. Oh, uh, LXD init. Fail to open no such file directory. Would you like to use clustering? Uh, I'm just gonna leave that to default. Configure new storage. Actually, you know what? Let's let's see. I just want to make sure we're following this guide because I don't want to get burned and do it wrong. So let's see. It uh, looks like they are. Yep, they're leaving that as the default. Um, name of the new storage pool. That was the default. Let's see. Name of the storage backend to use. What are they doing? So they have dir. Um, interesting. So we don't seem to have, oh, we do have that option. Yeah. Sorry. There we go. Yep. So yep. We'll do it as dir. Would you like to connect to an MAAS server? I don't even know what that is. Um, we'll say no. Okay. Network bridge. They are saying yes. So it looks like they are just defaulting through the rest of these prompts. So we'll just enter, enter, enter all the way through. Would you like to be Nope. Uh, it's a lot of prompts, man. Jeez. Let's see. Okay, so now we should have the Linux container daemon initialized. So let's see. Once you have configured the LXD, you can create a container. Uh, here we're creating a container for Ubuntu 18.04. See. Um, then you should be able to launch the container and view it. So that makes sense. Um, it's the same kind of thing with Docker, I guess. You can uh, run the container. And, and since you are starting the container, you can interact with it as root on the container, but I'm assuming we should be able to like, you know, volume mount the file system and run as root. Oh, wait, what is this? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe we're doing this a little different. Steps to be formed on the attacker machine. Download build Alpine on your local machine to the Git repository. 
uh, execute. The, uh, okay. So it looks like we have to do this. Post the. Okay. And. Yeah, so we're building an image. It looks like it's going to want us to transfer the image onto the machine. And then I would assume, yeah, so it's the same kind of thing as a, a Docker Proveska looks like, is we are building the image, except, you know, we're going to build it on our attacker machine and then transfer it to the victim and then start it up and volume mount, um, you know, the the file system. And we should have root over the file system there. So let's just do this. Let's um grab this code here we'll clone alpine and build it awesome i'm gonna exit out of this because this was confusing me um just close the whole thing okay let's all right so we have this going all right um i'm gonna split this again and let's clone this stuff and build alpine okay Run it as root. There we go. All right, let's see if this works. Hopefully, let's. I've never done it before. Now, after this, what do we need to do? Just host it on the Python server and wget it? Easy enough. It looks like it's working. Might just take a minute. Um, okay. And then, yeah, so we'll import it, initialize it, run it. Say a prayer. Hope it works, right? I don't know. So yeah, I mean, while we're working through this, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, you know, it'd be nice to have something to talk about. Or if anybody's interested in that kind of stuff, let me know. Um, either about the box, about me, anything. So this download seems to be taking a while. Or maybe it's just a build. I mean, I don't think it's my internet. That's actually one of the things I had to do when I started uh, the new job I'm at now is I, I had to upgrade to a, a gigabit internet plan just for the uplink speed for all the, the scanning I was doing from my home because like it was so much traffic that on the first week of work, I ended up, you know, doing a denial of service on my own router because I was putting so much traffic out, you know, scanning these big subnets. It was kind of funny. So perks of the job, I guess, right? So yeah, man, this is taking forever. But I think we should be good. Once we have this, we already have the um, Python server stood up, and that should be fine. I guess it's just a waiting game now. So it should be good. We have all this stuff. Good. Good. It's all ready. I wonder if there's any other gotchas here. I mean, I wonder if we... I don't think we had to do these steps up before. Because this would, this would just give us root of the container. That's not what we want. Right. I mean, root of the container would be wouldn't be the privileges that we actually need to root the, you know, the main file system. Let's see, arrange Discord server. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely be up for setting up a Discord server if people are interested. Um, I've never I'm I'm not a big Discord user, so I'm not too familiar with how to set a server up or any of that, but I mean, I'm sure I could figure it out. Um, if people are interested in that, I could definitely definitely do that for you, for sure. That'd be a cool way for people to get in touch and, you know, talk to each other about all this kind of stuff, for sure. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely pretty cool having uh, all you guys show up for the stream and everything. You know, I really appreciate it. And hopefully you can take something away from it, too. Uh, I know I'm pretty pretty new to making all these videos and stuff, but I'm having a ton of fun doing it. And it's awesome being able to interact with everybody. I mean, you guys are all awesome. And it's pretty cool to be able to talk to people and meet new people who are interested in, in the same kind of stuff, you know? I think that was one of the big things that helped me out is, you know, I met my friend Eugene um, a couple of years ago when I was an intern at a, at a company. And we ended up, you know, both being interested in pen testing stuff and, Neither of us knew too much about it. So we just kind of, we would spend like all day after work doing hack the box and having somebody else to work with made a world of difference. I mean, if you're going through this stuff by yourself and you get stuck, it's, it can be hard to find the motivation to start back up and like push through the box. But if you have somebody else to keep you motivated and somebody else to like bounce ideas off of when you're really stuck, I mean, it will help you so much. I used to just start meeting people on like the hack the box forums. I mean, I would post, you know, questions or answer people's questions. And then 
uh, started up like a little Slack group and just started inviting people. And, you know, meeting people that way has been awesome. I mean, I've met so many cool people. I mean, I even met uh, Ben who did all of the artwork for my channel. And uh, I thought, you know, he did an awesome job and it was super cool of him to do that. And, you know, he's someone I met on the Hack the Box forums. He's a super cool guy. So, I mean, if you're ever interested in getting any artwork or logos or anything like that done from him, I have a link to his website in my channel description. So definitely go check him out and give him some support. He is awesome. All right, so it looks like all this is installed now. So let's get back to the box and get some of this started up. So, yep, now we just have to W get all this over. So that should be fine. Uh, we should have, let's see, where did they say the file is located? Is it in this um, Alpine Builder? Okay. Saying we should have this tar file, but we don't seem to have it. Um, let's see. No, build Alpine. All right. That's weird. Where, what are we missing here? So we have, I mean, we just did the build Alpine, right? Let's see. Yep, so that's all good. Let's see. Check the result. Let's see. Probably missing something obvious, huh? Um, let's see. Okay. Oh wait, no such file error. Oh no. Failed to install root file system. That's not good. I was too busy talking. I didn't read the output. I just figured it worked. So let's see. Something there did not, it did not like that. That's interesting. Let's see if we can Google and find a quick uh, solution to that. Yeah, thanks Pentest guy for the heads up, man. Um, I wonder, what does it not like about that? APK update fixes the problem. Okay. Um, let's try that. So we'll do a, um, pseudo APK update. No, it does. I don't even, I don't have that. I mean, maybe they meant apt. I don't know. Um, interesting. Let's check on the actual GitHub mirror. It looks like they have an issue open about it. So probably something I'm doing wrong. Um, let's see. Okay. Pseudo build Alpine. Yep. If not, uh, okay, go to... It says go to here and remove all the mirrors except the first one. Okay. Looks like that worked for a few people. So let's see if we can do that. Um, what was that path? Yep. So let's see if we can, if we can do that. Uh, no, there's nothing in here. Interesting. Unless it's our actual root file system. Nope, nothing. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Doesn't seem to be working. I wonder what is going on. That's the fun, right? Half the battle is getting the tools to work. Uh, I think finding the exploits is usually the easy part. Getting them to work is the hard part. So I wonder what is up. If we go, let's see, once let's go to user share Alpine. So let's go into root file system. Let's see if we can find it ourselves. So Rerun bash build Alpine with sudo, right? Oh, did I not do it with sudo? Oh, no. Let's see. Let's try it again. If I didn't do it with sudo, that would be... Uh, oh, why am I doing bash? Uh, sudo build Alpine. and Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was I didn't run it with sudo. I wonder if, let me double check and see if I did. I guess... Yeah, so I did run it with pseudo access. So I wonder what could have caused that. I don't know. 
keep doing some reading while that's trying to build again. Um, just to double check. I mean, who knows? Maybe it was just a fluke and it'll work this time. Um, we'll see. But it is a little strange. So let's see. I might even try running it just as root and like like sue to root and do it that way. Um, I've had problems with that before, like running something as sudo didn't work, but running it like actually as root worked. I'm not too sure what kind of, you know, uh, things cause that issue, but it's something that's happened to me before. Okay. Interesting. Now, I wonder, am I missing something from this article? It looks like they, they clone it, they build it. I don't think it's, what is it timing out on? Yeah, fail to install root file system. Okay. Ignoring. Super weird. So let's see. Let's just go in as root and let's cd into here and let's try to just run it as root instead. See if that's causing the issue and we'll do a little bit of reading in the meantime and see if we can fix it. Um, we'll see if it works, right? Okay, build Alpine and wonder, are we missing some sort of dependency? Hmm. Doesn't look like it. I mean, reading through these steps, it seems to be all fine. I wonder what this is. Hmm. Fun times, right? Trying to get, uh, what is LXD to work? building an Alpine container. I've never had issues doing this kind of thing before, but I don't know. That's what happens when you run through a box for the first time live, right? I think this is the part where it errored out, right? So let's see if we can just type in, you know, error doing this. Okay, uh, actually did that finish? Oh wait. Uh, it seemed to work there. No, see, yeah, see, didn't like this. Doesn't, doesn't like this part right here. So let's paste that in, see if we can fix it. Yeah, this is the same thing. Let's read through it more carefully, I guess, and see, I mean, what version of Alpine are we? Three, one, two. Okay. It looks like it's working now. I mean... I don't know. Selecting mirror. Well, it might just be a problem with the mirrors. But I I would find that hard to believe that all the mirrors are not working. Although I'm just not sure. I know one of the solutions said to change the mirror files, but you know, like what mirrors it's pointing to, but it did not I we didn't seem to have that file available. Let's see. Okay. Interesting. So it looks like they didn't do anything different. Or they did the target architecture, it looks like. Um, let's see. Not a Discord user either, but I joined in on that. Watching the videos has been excellent. Awesome. Thanks. I'm really glad you're enjoying the videos and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, if people are interested, I would definitely be open to setting up a Discord and, um, you know, I'll I'll chat with you guys as much as possible. Um, and it can be a great place people to just bounce ideas off each other, you know, no matter how new you are or how advanced you are. I mean, you know, everyone would be welcome just to kind of hang out, meet some people and learn some new stuff. I mean, I'm a firm believer and there's no such thing as a stupid question. And uh, I know I certainly would not be where I am today if I hadn't had the help of a ton of other people. So I think that would be a great idea, really. Yeah, so if not, maybe they already use mirror sites, but it will create, okay. Interesting. I'm wondering what could be causing that. Yeah, so failed again. Now let's just try to remove this. Well, let's make sure that's, I don't know if, what that is. Um, let's just, Get rid of this entire LXD Alpine Builder. 
Let's clone it again. We'll just do everything as root. Try it again. See if we can get it to work. Um, so, man, this is uh, the worst part of this little code block here. How do I get this to, I don't know. We'll just paste it in here. Uh, we just want to do the git clone for now. And we'll do all the steps by hand. So let's clone this again. And we'll start from square one. Um, okay, now we should just be able to do build Alpine, right? Make sure that I'm not missing anything here. Build Alpine. All right. Clean slate running as root. Hopefully none of the permissions are screwed up. And we'll see if that works. Um, weird, weird, weird. This is like the issue I ran into uh, doing forest. If you remember, if you were there for the last stream, I couldn't run ACL pwn because of like all the different versions of Inpacket and Neo4j that I had installed. So it's like whenever you're running Kali, it's a, it's awful to manage, truly. I mean, there's so many different tools with different dependencies or they depend on different versions of different things. I mean, it's like, it can be awful uh, to try to work through. Now, uh, let's see. What version were they using here? They're using, I wonder if it's, yeah, 310. I wonder if we can just do version 310. You know, maybe uh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe three twelve is there's something wrong with it. I don't I don't know. So let's see. Do they have a releases? No, no releases. Um, so installing this. Uh, I wonder if we can apt install that. Wait. Okay, it works. Okay, that, well, that's cool. I don't know if running it as root did it or if something happened with the mirrors and timeouts. I have no idea what was causing that. Um, but that is very, very strange. Now, of course, all the permissions are going to be screwed up now because I did that as root. Uh, that's a nightmare. Well, that's fine. So let's just CD. Oh, we can't do that. Okay, let's just CD back into here. That's fine. We'll get it to work. And... Now we'll transfer that all over. Let's just make this, let's move the tar file in here uh, to tabby. And then let's just change mod 777, that Alpine thing. All right, because that's what we have to actually transfer onto the box, right? So let's see. Now if we go back, ah, now we have that Alpine thing that we need to transfer. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. We'll unzoom here, make sure we can see if we get our HTTP connection back. And then let's W get this and put it on the box. So, all right, here we are. Let's W get HTTP colon slash slash this uh, slash, who knows what that name was supposed to be. Some god awful <laughs> tar, tar archive name. Um, I get so used to switching tabs up here. I keep moving my mouse up there to do it, but I'm like, oh, no, I'm using Tmux. I'm elite now, right? All right, so that is transferred over. All is good. Now let's go back to our little tutorial here. So we've transferred it over. Now we need to do an LXD image import, and we'll do an alias of my image. Oh, I always do a Control-Shift-C to copy things off the web. That's what that was. Uh, I'm just used to doing it from the terminal. So we'll do image import, and then you know this Alpine alias, we'll just call it my image, we'll follow along with the terminology that the guide uses. Uh, yep, so alias my image, that looks like it should work. Okay, now we should do an LXD image list. Um, what do they do? LXD, oh, LXC, okay. LXC image list. Okay, so we do have our image on there, awesome. Seems like it's working. So now we just need to run this. Uh, I'm just going to copy all of this. Let's see if we can get it all. There we go. We'll just run all these commands. Looks like we're going to... All right, let's see. Yep, navigate to mount root to see all the resources from inside the host machine. Okay, yeah. So that's what we're doing. It seems like we're just mounting. We're mounting the root file system into slash mount slash root. And since we have root on the container and we've mounted the root file system, we'll be able to interact with the file system through the container as root. 
right? So we don't actually have root on the box. We have root in the container, but we value volume mounted the root file system. So, oh, that copied. Sometimes my copy and paste gets screwed up because I'm uh, I'm actually running this Kali machine on my ESXi server and remote it into it through VMware Workstation. So sometimes the copy and paste gets all screwy. Okay, so we're root. Okay, that's awesome. So we should be able to, let's see, cd to slash mount and cd to root. Okay, so this seems to be the root file system. So from here, I think we could just grab the flag. Probably, um, but I think that's a little cheating if we do it that way. Yeah, so we could, we could grab the flag. I don't like that though, because I don't think we have a true root shell, right? I think we're still in the container, um, right? Host name is it gonna say? Yeah, so we're still in the container. I don't like that. So let's go into slash Etsy, and let's see, we can do something. Hopefully, not break the box. Let's vim uh, the password file. No, no, no. Let's vim the shadow file. Oh, vim not found. Okay. VI. All right. So we should be able to set a plain text password in here. So let's just say, actually, you know what? No, no, no. We're not, we're not doing that. No, no, no. Let's go to, sorry. Uh, let's go to slash root and slash mount slash root. Okay, and now we cd into root again. It's a little confusing, right? Um, what we're gonna try to do is just put our SSH key in place again. I think that's a cleaner method to do it. I always try to do these boxes in a way that it's not gonna affect other people, right? So what I was just thinking about doing was, you know, setting a, a password on the root account in shadow. But if somebody were to just get on the box in their low privilege shell, they would see that password and they might think that's the intended method because they don't know that I did that. So I don't I don't like to do things that way. I don't think it's cool. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you have to. So, yeah, it looks like there's already an SSH key in place here. Um, so let's just cat that out. Um, actually, you know what? Yeah, yeah, we'll just cat it out. Okay. So we have that. Now let us go back to our box. Let's just, you know, vim root dot, oh, no, yeah, root underscore RSA. We'll just call it that. That's fine. Okay, we'll paste that in. Is that everything? That looks like it. Maybe. Um, looks a little off. Let's see. Yeah, right here. We didn't get the, the beginning of it. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So we'll vim this again. Let's make sure we get... The entire key in there that's probably important right you need the whole whole key to use it um now let's change mod that to 600 for the key and we'll ssh root at 10 10 10 194 with the key root rsa and let's see if it works no it did not work man that sucks all right um i wonder maybe we just can't ssh in as root so oh well I might have the key wrong. Let me just double check because I feel like I have the key wrong. Because I, I kind of like butchered the key. So let's see. Um, uh, let's see. I wonder, I want to turn the zoom down a little bit. I'm not sure how to, to do that. Looks like the copy and paste. Wrong. Yeah, yeah. I think the copy and paste was definitely wrong. Um, let's see. Missed the top line of the key. Let me see. B3. Um, oh, I uh, there we go. I think this is it. Let's try it again now. Nope. Okay. Doesn't like that. What is going on here? Yeah, so we have these. And then we have all this. We'll just try this again. You know what? I'm, I'm going to do this the uh, the kind of the cheap way for now. Let's copy this ID RSA into slash var uh, www.html. 
And then we'll get rid of it after so that nobody else grabs it. Oh. Um, no, it's going to be slash mount slash root slash there. Okay. And then let's change mod. We'll just do 777 for now uh, to this. Okay. So now we can just download the key. That should, you know, alleviate all those problems we were just having. So to do our ID underscore RSA, don't have permission. Okay. Interesting. Um, all right, let's see if we can just copy from Tmux. Probably shouldn't even use it because uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing half the time with it. Let's see. We're so close. So close. Oh, wait. We didn't. Uh... There we go. That's fine. We'll do it this way. Now we should have access to download the key. Now we can see it. All right. All is good. Order is restored. You know, off the struggle bus for now. Uh, so now it's Vim root. And we'll get rid of all of this. Now we can paste the key in. And hopefully all is good now. All right. Awesome. So now we have root access. So that's pretty cool. I liked the fact that they had the SSH keys already in place. So we didn't have to do any weird like trickery with the box and change things up on it. So that's pretty cool. Now we have root, a proper root. And you can see now we do have access to get root.txt. So, you know, again, you would be able to, um, you know, once you're at that in that volume mounted state, you would be able to grab the flag. But I really think it's good practice to go through getting that fully interactive shell and getting root that way. I know if you're looking to go through OSCP, that is vital. I know with your screenshots, you need a fully interactive root shell. Um, so like, I don't think that volume mounted uh, shell would have cut it if you're going through the OSCP exam, right? So if you're doing that, make sure you, you know, practice the way you want to perform on the exam and uh, go through and do it all that way. So it looks like that is the end of Tabby. Thanks everybody for showing up. I think that was a a really good time and a lot of fun. I really appreciate everyone who came. Uh, and I should be putting the recording up on the channel. So if you want to watch it again later, or have any questions or, you know, show it to other people, it should be up there for, for you to see. Uh, and again, I'll work on getting a Discord channel put together if people are interested in that. And uh, we can get, get rolling with that, keep in touch and help each other out, learn all this stuff. Again, I think, you know, having a partner to work through with all this stuff can can really make a huge difference. So yeah, that's about it. I think I'll go ahead and end the stream. Thank you all for showing up and have a great day.